and mark every time his butt touches the ground. Good. Hi, Ethan here with Standing Stone Kennels and we're back with Sprig. Um, he is nine weeks old. We're going to do his next training session today. If you've been following along, you saw that we charged the clicker first, then we worked on targeting for here. I'm gonna kind of demo that today. And then we're gonna move into his next behavior, which will be sitting. Now, this guy wants to sit, loves to sit. This is going to look pretty easy probably today, even though we haven't worked on this yet. Um, now, if I preface with this, then he'll make sure and make me look like a liar here, which will give us something to work on. Hopefully, that was my plan. But ultimately, we're gonna teach him sit today. We're gonna try and start marking that behavior so that we can, again, introduce a cue and get him to sit when we want him to, not just when he wants to. So, to start off with, we're gonna grab some food. This guy is ready for this evening. We've got his meal. And we're gonna show you kind of what we've been working on. That's that targeting here. So again, here, good, good boy. When we left last time, he was kind of starting to do this, but, and we just barely started introducing the cue. Now we're using it every time here, good. And you can see him rush right up to touch our hand. This is building a really good behavior for recall. Here, good. Get him warmed up with just a few wraps. Here, good. Now that one was very excited, some jumping, hopping. Ultimately, we won't be marking that again. We'll kind of pay attention. It's not the end of the world, but what we need to do when we're working with uh, puppies like this is evaluate patterns that happen. And if anything starts to come out in their behaviors that you don't want, like this little bit of jumping, if he thinks, Every time I say here, he has to jump or jump at me. Um, then we're gonna have to switch things up and prevent that from happening. You'll see it when you start working with your puppy. If you accidentally mark the wrong thing, it's a very powerful tool. They pick up on that quickly. And he's gonna start thinking, I have to hop, hop every single time. I mean, it's, it's very impressive how powerful the clicker is in training, um, but just pay attention if you start to see patterns in things that you don't want to happen, we gotta change those. So again, here, good boy, yeah, that's awesome. Here, good. Making sure again, not to push my hand into his face. Here, good. I'm gonna show this one more time. Come on, here, good boy, good boy. All right, now we're gonna start working on sit. And I said this before, he really likes to do this, especially when he's waiting for me to do something with him. So he's standing looking at me, getting nothing. We'll just wait on him. Good. Boy. Get his feet moving again and then just wait. If you have your puppies focus, they're gonna try and figure out other things to do to get your attention. Good, now I said he's gonna make this look easy, but ultimately we're just, we've got his attention in this training session. As long as we can maintain um, his focus and mark every time his butt touches the ground. Good, as he gets more consistent with this, it's gonna be harder and harder to get him to stand because he knows that now sitting is what he's getting rewarded for. Now, if you lose your puppy's focus, where they stand and look at you for a minute and then wander off, we're gonna to have to try something different. That would be keeping their attention like this, maybe pulling that hand up, keeping their attention, good. Keeping their attention up high a lot of times when you incorporate your hands or any kind of other stuff into that, um, you see more of what you just saw there. We're, we're feeding him a lot with these hands, so they're exciting and he's jumping for that. We don't want any of those things. So ultimately, standing and waiting is gonna be our best option. Now, 
a lot of people say, well, it's going to be drastically less confusing if you give the dog something. You show them what you want. And there is some truth to that, but um, I feel that the dogs have a much more powerful understanding not only of what they're doing to to get rewarded because they came up with it on their own but it also kind of sparks this desire to work and learn they're trying to figure out how to please us and that mentality that we can develop here um, is going to make everything better down the road you you're developing work ethic and the better work ethic he has the more we're going to be able to teach him later Good. As soon as that butt's all the way on the ground, we don't want to mark any floating or floaters. <laughs> Just wait here. Good. As he gets more consistent with this, we'll start to introduce the cue. And we're going to hold that cue until right before the butt touches the ground. So it would look, we'll try it on this one. Sit. Good. Now, anybody watching probably saw my click was just a smidgeny slow there. We gotta pay attention. You can see I'm just thinking, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Now you're starting to see what I talked about would happen next. Good boy. He's not going to want to move anymore because he's figured out this is how I get rewarded. Good boy. So this is helping to develop the behavior we're trying to teach to, to last longer. And sitting for extended periods of time will be something that um, we will use later in life. And rewarding that now is not a bad thing either. Good boy. We want to develop all of the things with our puppies that we're going to see out of them as adults. Now, granted, I can't have him sit and stay for five or 10 minutes, but asking for an extra three, four, five seconds isn't going to hurt at all. Now, when we think about clicker training, so that this last situation, I'm gonna pick him up so he's not trying at all. Um, so this last situation makes sense. When he was sitting there for the extended period of time and I clicked and marked that and then clicked again and marked that. And then at the end, he ended up just getting up on his own. Well, the clicker, when you're using it, should mark and end behaviors. Now, if the dog chooses not to end the behavior like he did there, he was sitting, I marked, rewarded him, he continued sitting, that's okay. I marked that again, and as soon as he hears that click, he's free to do whatever. So nothing was wrong about that situation. We were just rewarding him for sitting for an extended period of time. Now, we'll do a few more reps here, incorporating sit, the cue, into the reps here. Oop, freebies. That one went clear under the door. Got her. There you go. Now, um, another thing that some people see or do with positive reinforcement training is they drop the food and then the puppy picks it up off the ground. I personally do not like doing that. And the reason for that is then the puppy spends all of this time looking down on the ground for the next thing as opposed to looking for us for what we're going to ask of them next. So we're gonna get his feet moving, do a few more reps here, and then we'll give him a, a jackpot at the end, which I don't have his bowl ready, but we'll get him a jackpot at the end here. So we're gonna wait, good boy. Now you can see how much faster that happened than even just a couple minutes ago. Again, he's sitting, good boy, good boy. Now we're up again. Good, marking that set. Again, this marks the behavior. It says right there, that's what we want, and also ends the behavior. So everything after that, all bets are off. Let me start to incorporate this cue again here. Sit, good boy. Kind of held it in there. Do a little snake charming. 
He says, no, this is how I get rewarded. Good boy. Now we're going to have to coax him out of that so that we can see the behavior again. Good. Sit. Good boy. Now, everybody else that's watching probably saw that target for recall and no reward came from that. That is how we overcome the hurdle, which is the number one problem that people say they have using positive reinforcement. And that's going to be incorporating variable reinforcement. Now that means not every time he does it right, does he get the cookie or the treat. Variable reinforcement, real world example is gambling. You play a slot machine, you pull the thing, pretty lights happen, you win something, boom. You get some money, there's your positive reinforcement. Then you pull again, you lose, you pull again, you win. And as long as that um, variation happens often enough, you continue to play. And that's what we have to evaluate with our dogs. So he's doing an awesome job focusing. I will stop talking. But variable reinforcement is how we're going to build consistency without having to have our hand in the cookie jar to make things happen. Pull his attention up just a little bit. Nothing. So we'll stand up. That seemed to work a little better for him. Sit. I was trying to incorporate the cue, but I didn't want it to happen if he was going to wander off. So I held it. Again, sounding a little bit like the snake charmer. All right, let's get his feet moving. Another little tip or trick is that dogs' brains are directly attached to their feet. If you get that kind of blank stare, not sure what's happening, or you ask for a cue that they should understand, and it doesn't happen, get their feet moving, and then try again. Make sure you've got focus. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. A slow motion sitting there. Good. Sprig, sit, good boy. Use his name, pull his focus back to us. Sit, good boy, there you go, good. Also marking, um, as he's continuing sitting, I'm waiting for eye contact as well. That kind of gives us the you being lazy sitter now. Gives us that understanding that he's focused on us while he's doing it. So his feet moving. Um, we can only teach the behavior sit. We can only teach that behavior if he's actively doing it. So although marking a few times of sitting there is good, ultimately if he doesn't stand up, we can't get him to sit again. Good. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Start incorporating that. Okay will be his release from just about everything the rest of his life. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Sit. I used just a little bit of spatial pressure. I kind of moved into him with a half step and that got him A, focused up here, and then backing up at the same time, which helped that movement happen a little bit faster for us. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. We're going to do a few more reps here and then throw him that jackpot. He says, I know how to get rewarded. Good boy. Yeah. Okay. Sit. Good. Now, folks, I'm going to say it right now. Not all of your puppies are going to look like this, are going to do this well. And a lot of that comes down to breeding. Okay. Um, spend the money on a quality puppy. This guy definitely is one. And he's going to make a lot of this stuff look easy. Um, breeding can make or break what your training experience is like. And um, Josh and Whitney there at Riverstone Kennels, um, have a really great program going on, and this guy is a prime example of that. He's making this easy for me. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Just a couple more reps. Come on. Come on, come on. Sit. 
good boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sit. Good boy. All right, let's get that jackpot going. Good. Yeah, that tail wagon, happy pup. Sit. Good. Now, as we get further in this sitting and sitting and staying thing, we will start to ask him to sit and stay for his bowl of food. And we'll, um, we'll be able to shoot that in a video. You'll kind of see um, us work on that as we progress through these obedience sessions because each session is gonna end like this with the jackpot and we will continue to ask more and more and we'll be able to show you how that works as well. But ultimately guys, uh, thanks for watching this video, uh, keeping up with Sprig's progress. We do have a couple great videos coming up that are gonna involve some giveaways. I know what everybody's waiting for. He's cute and all, but we want some cool stuff. We're gonna be teaching place training next. That's gonna involve a Coranda dog bed. Um, they have really great products. We use them at the kennel here all the time. That's gonna be incorporated into his next video. And then the video after that, that will be like place training part two. We're actually gonna use a climb stand. It's K-L-I-M-B. And those have a little bit higher lift. We'll use those a lot in our retrieving sessions in the yard as he matures. So we're gonna be doing them back to back. It's gonna be Coranda dog bed giveaway and then a climb stand giveaway. So definitely tune into those. And in order to get involved in any of these uh, contests that we have upcoming, you've gotta like our social page and the sponsor social page to be eligible. All of those details will be involved in the videos, but to not miss out on anything upcoming, make sure to follow us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and make sure notifications are turned on. Thanks guys, and we will be back with you soon. Mm -hmm.